Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. I now give the floor to Mr. Gear Peterson. Mr. Peterson, can you hear me? Yes, Madam President, I can hear you. Good morning, you I'm have the floor. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, let me first express my deep concern about the situation on the ground in Syria and the devastating impact it's having on civilians. This month, we have seen further spillover effects from regional conflict. Multiple airstrikes attributed to Israel, including on the residential areas or homes and Damascus, reportedly resulted in both civilian and military casualties, including advisors from Iran's Revolutionary Guards. In some instances, Israel confirmed it carried out airstrikes in what it said was a response to ongoing rocket attacks launched from southern Syria towards occupied Syrian Golan. The U.S. carried out what it described as retaliatory strikes for a drone attack on a U.S. post in Jordan near the border with Syria that resulted in military casualties. The U.S. claimed that Iranian-backed groups were behind this and other attacks on U.S. bases, a claim Iran denies. The U.S. strikes hit dozens of what they say were Iran-linked targets in Syria and Iraq, with Syrian state media reporting both military and civilian casualties. Meanwhile, Madam President, all other vectors of the Syrian conflict itself continue and remain the biggest cause of civilian casualties and displacement. This month, the entire north of the country, containing millions of civilians, has seen multiple frontline skirmishes exchange of artillery, rocket, and sniper fire, along with pro-government and HDS drone strikes and Turkish drone strikes. ISIL attacks continue to rise in quantity and impact, particularly in the central and northeastern regions. Southern Syria remains violent and unstable, with further killings and clashes in Dera as well as fresh confrontations between the Jordanian army and what they say were armed smugglers on the Syrian-Jordanian border. Plainly, the tension in the region need to be urgently de-escalating, starting with the immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza that the Secretary General has called for. And Madam President, we equally plainly need urgent de-escalation inside Syria, building on existing ceasefire arrangements towards a nationwide ceasefire in line with Resolution 2254. Civilians and civilian infrastructure must be protected. Security Council listed terrorist groups must be fought in a manner that is cooperative and firmly in line with international law and that prioritizes the protection of civilians. I impressed these points on key international stakeholders when I convened an international Syria support group ceasefire task force plenary meeting here in Geneva earlier this month. All voices around the table assured that none wish to see further escalation a welcome sentiment I heard in engagement with regional ministers too. It is vital that all stakeholders act accordingly. Madam President, a year after the devastating earthquakes in Syria and Turkey that killed thousands and displaced millions, Syria's humanitarian crisis has only deepened. On the one hand, we have received some good news with the Syrian government's recent extensions of its authorization for the UN to use Bab al Hawa, Bab al Salam, and Al Riyah border crossings. But the broader humanitarian trends are bleaker than ever. And I'm sure that Martin will give you 
quite a few details on how serious the situation really are. But just to remind you a couple of headlines. What is needed is more access by all modalities, including cross-line convoys, more donor support, including for early recovery and livelihoods, and greater efforts to mitigate any adverse effects of sanctions on ordinary Syrians. Madam President, meanwhile, we still see no concrete results in addressing the situation of an estimated 100,000 arbitrarily detained, forcibly disappeared and missing persons as called for in Resolution 2254. This month, I met once again with families of missing and detained persons hailing from all areas of Syria who continue to live both in agony and hope of seeing their detained loved ones released or at least knowing their whereabouts and fate. On this, let me reiterate my support for the General Assembly's decision to establish the independent institution on missing persons. We have indeed a collective responsibility to help its work. Madam President, over 18 months ago, I issued invitations for the ninth session of the Constitutional Committee to take place in Geneva. That session did not take place because, as Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov confirmed this month, Russia no longer considers Switzerland a neutral venue, and the Syrian government did not accept Geneva as a result. From the outset, I have been clear about several points. Let me remind you about four of them. First, I have reminded all that the Syrian government and Syrian negotiations commissions in the terms of reference for the committee agreed on Geneva and stressed that the process should take place without foreign interference. Second, as a facilitator, I would be creative in trying to find a way forward for all parties, including exploring all possible alternatives. Third, if the Syrian government and Syrian Negotiations Commission reach consensus on the venue other than Geneva, I will support this. And fourth, this Syrian non-Syrian issue needs to be overcome so that the Syrian-led and owned UN facilitated process could continue. Madam President, guided by this approach, over 18 months, with the support of various outside stakeholders, including the Astana guarantors and the Arab Contact Group, various venues have been floated. But I'm sorry to say, the reality is this. Not one has yet enjoyed the minimum consent required of both Syrian parties and the potential host itself. I have warned that this may be the case when these issues were first raised 18 months ago. I myself have recently proposed a further option that the ninth session could be convened in the UN office at Nairobi. I appreciate my UN colleagues in Nairobi being ready to do all that was required to help us host. I recently commended this way out to the Syrian parties. I also relayed a further suggestion from one Syrian party to the other on an alternative regional venue. However, I regret to say that consensus among the Syrian parties was not found on either venue, just as it had not been on earlier suggestions. Madam President, having left no stone on turn to find an alternative venue, I believe the only way forward at this time is to reconvene in Geneva, at least as a bridging proposal while there is no consensus on an alternative venue, while also remaining open to an alternative venue for future sessions, if consensus is found. This is something 
I have flagged for some time may be the only way forward if no alternative could be found. Therefore, Madam President, I am today issuing formal invitations for a ninth round in Geneva in late April. I appeal today to the Syrian parties to respond positively and to all key international stakeholders to support the U.S. actions as a facilitator and refrain from interfering regarding a venue the Syrian parties themselves had formally agreed. I believe it's important for the Constitution Committee to meet as soon as possible and to continue its work. An indefinite hiatus can only undermine the Constitution Committee's credibility and work. Madam President, at the same time, I have always said that the Constitution Committee cannot alone solve this conflict. The Resolution 2254 speaks to a wide range of issues. Let me remind this Council once again that clear ideas for step-for-step -step confidence building measures addressing core elements of Resolution 2254 remain on the table. I stand ready to enter into discussions to flesh out all details and operational aspects with all Syrian parties and other stakeholders where willingness is shown on the proposals table or to receive alternative ideas. Madam President, as we look to find ways to fully implement Resolution 2254, we continue to draw on the insights and advice of a broad spectrum of Syrians, including the Women's Advisory Board and Civil Society Support Room, who convened in Geneva this month and met with each other too. It was heartening to see a wide spectrum of Syrian women and men discuss common ground and practical ways forwards, despite significant differences among them. They discussed essential issues such as local government and possibilities for a coherent decentralized approach for the whole of Syria in line with national sovereignty and territorial integrity and Resolution 2254. Women advisory board members held insightful discussions on other challenges and opportunities, including areas for commonalities, such, and the, such as in the field of education. Finally, Madam President, I have outlined some elements for immediate action, getting the Constitution Committee back on track, traction on step-for-step -step confidence building measures, and immediate de-escalation. However, we must be honest with ourselves. Such entry points cannot, in and of themselves, solve the Syrian conflict. I continue to hear from many Syrians and outside players too, on different sides of the conflict, that we must embed the initiatives we have developed in the broader approach and package. One, that puts all of the needs and concerns of Syrian and international stakeholders on the table, one that involves all necessary stakeholders and one that involves compromise from all players. Ultimately, this is how to ensure the protection of Syrian civilians and allow the Syrian people to realize their legitimate aspirations while also in lockstep ensuring Syria's socio-economic recovery and restoring Syria's sovereignty, independence, unity and territorial integrity. Madam President, I know this may seem to be an inopportune time. I know very well that international attention is focused on multiple other crises. But there might also be a sense in some quarters that the conflict is easier just to manage and far too difficult to solve. Such thinking is mistaken. Look at the trends. The regional spillover is only the latest accelerant to a conflict that is growing in complexity and with each passing year. The situation is worsening on almost all indicators and the status quo is unsustainable 
and unmanageable. As I discussed with you all last month, we have to prepare the ground and work for a broader approach to resolving this conflict in line with Resolution 2254. Thank you, Madam President. I thank Mr. Peterson for his briefing. I now 